All right. Here we have disclosures that are made within the summary of significant accounting policies, which is within the notes of the financial statements. And that includes a basis of measurement for how numbers are used in preparing the financial statements. Again, describing qualitative factors of the numbers. Accounting principles and methods that are used during the financial statement period. So again, like maybe in year one, we considered gold to be a cash equivalent. And then maybe in year two, we started selling gold bars. So that now has to be considered inventory. Those are both valid treatments for gold, but you need to tell the investors and creditors what you're doing. How are you amortizing intangible assets such as goodwill? Which depreciation methods are you using? Maybe you went from using a calendar year to now you're a 630 year end. How did you consolidate? Did you, do you have equity method investments? You need to talk about that. Use of estimates. Are we estimating possible receivables that we will not ever receive? Are we estimating future revenues? What are we estimating? And how are we doing it? Lastly, revenue recognition issues. How are we recognizing revenue? Now, I know there are set rules for revenue recognition. However, there are you know, there's a little leeway here and there about what makes sense, right? Because you have standard set rules by gap. But if it makes more sense to the investors to do something a different way, then by all means, do that. As long as it makes sense and it's not misleading to the investors. Well, all of these are examples of items that are included in the summary of significant accounting policies. You'll commonly see questions asking what items could potentially be in this uh, summary. So be familiar with the potential examples. All right. Remember that the summary of significant accounting policies is an explanation of the numbers in the financial statements. As such, it would not include the following items. Now, long-term debt maturity dates and amounts. This is not a description. This would be in our debt summary schedule. This would be in the actual financial statements rather than in the notes. These are common examples that they'll try to get you to choose as wrong answers as what is included in the summary. We also have details relating to changes in accounting principles. So that is not going to be in the summary of significant accounting policies. That will be disclosed separately. The dollar amount of account balances. Now, this one should be the most clear because remember, that's reporting. That's reporting the numbers in the financials. We, in the notes, in the summary, we are describing how these numbers came about. So these are in the actual financials. Lastly, numbers are not, remember, included. So computations of depreciation, depletion, and amortization are going to be not included in the summary of significant accounting policies. For those of you not familiar, depletion is the same thing as depreciation and amortization. It is just for natural resources. So if you have a gold mine and you're mining gold or an oil well, maybe you deplete it over a 20-year period. Same process as depreciation and amortization, if anyone's not familiar yet. That is the same process. You amortize your intangible. So maybe you have a contract with someone that's worth money. And as long as that contract stands, it's an intangible asset, right? But maybe you amortize that over 20 years, just like you would depreciate a fixed asset over a certain amount of time. 